Garuda Airlines Executive Director Indra Sithiawan is clearly a man under intense pressure. Since the arsenic poisoning of a high-profile passenger on one of his airplanes in September, the media just haven't let up. And Garuda's reputation is being well and truly dragged through the mud. His attempts to avoid scrutiny are increasingly irrelevant. Evidence is mounting that employees of Indonesia's national carrier helped organize, or at the very least, are attempting to cover up their involvement in a political assassination. The investigation has rocked Indonesia. In recent weeks, suspicion has focused not only on the airline, but also on Indonesia's feared security and intelligence establishment. The victim from Garuda Flight 974 is returned home. Munir Said Talib was Indonesia's bravest and hardest working human rights campaigner. He led a tireless crusade against state sponsored thuggery and militarism. His colleagues in human rights circles are feeling the loss terribly. We all have not recovered from it. You know, the movement, which is completely in disarray now. Because there is, he's the glue, he's the bridge. We have no, no willingness and no capacity to, you know. So I don't know, it's just, if I, I'm trying not to think about it just because I can't. Uh, because I'm afraid that I might just uh, quit. Munir began his rise to prominence as a legal aid lawyer in East Java in the early 1990s. He met his wife Suchiwati around this time. She was a union leader at the local factory. After leading a strike, she was sacked and Munir took up her case. For Suchiwati, it was love at first sight. Saya sangat apa ya suka dan apa melihat dia itu wow mengagumi ya banyak hal yang saya tidak temui di laki-laki lain saya temui di dia ya terus terang banyak hal yang membuat saya sama dia cocok banyak hal yang kemudian saya ya saya mencintai dia. It was 1996, and Suharto's military dictatorship was still strong and ruthless. From the very beginning, Suciwati says she worried about his safety. Saya tahu resiko dia ya, resiko dia ketika ketika ya saya sempat dia ya sempat pernah ya kepikir ketika dia di diskusi saya diajak ikut di sana. Saya sampai berfikir di antara para penonton ini ada ada orang mungkin tentara atau apa bin ya saya yang kepikir itu tiba-tiba menembak dia di forum itu karena ini ini banget kritis banget isi-isi dari diskusi itu itu feeling saja feeling aja waktu itu dan saya sempat ngomong sama dia dia cuma ketawa aja seperti itulah dia Rahlan Nasidik heads one of the human rights groups founded by Munir he now dedicates all his time to helping solve the murder of his mentor. You must be a brave man stepping into the shoes of Munir to lead the organization he formed with, with uh, his death still fresh in your mind. My destiny was written by Munir's. What I know was that he's my good friend and he was murdered. He's a world-class human rights defender. He did many noble things for his country. 
So I don't have any reason at all, you know. I will be very ashamed to face my, to to see my face in the mirror, if I if I say no. September 6, 2004. Munir says farewell to his family and friends in Jakarta before boarding Garuda flight 974 to Holland. After postponing his departure several times, Munir was finally heading off to do a master's degree in humanitarian law. His colleagues were sad to see him go, but proud and happy for him at the same time. This home video was taken at a farewell party three days before Munir left. Baru kali ini saya mau sekolah yang agak serius, makanya saya uji satu tahun ini bisa, bisa serius gak? After saying his farewells at Jakarta airport, Munir went to the Garuda check-in counter. Ketika dia naik Garuda, saya juga tanya sama dia, kenapa naik Garuda? Saya ini bukan sok nasionalisme. Tapi saya tahu dengan saya naik Garuda, devisa, uang pajak macam-macam itu masuk ke negara kita. Dan itu sangat penting. Itulah. At the check-in counter, he bumped into a pilot he knew, who offered to get him upgraded to business class. It's difficult to verify any details of the pre-boarding period. 58 of 60 CCTV cameras in the airport were not working at the time. And the two that were working were either switched off or the footage has been erased. As Munir boarded, the pilot came through with his promise and generously offered his own seat in business class. He then moved into premium class. Munir would surely have been grateful. After all, it was going to be a long flight. When offered a welcome drink, Munir opted for the orange juice. For dinner, he chose fried noodles. He then sat back and read the paper, and in just under an hour, he disembarked at Changi Airport in Singapore. He had 45 minutes in transit. When uh, I joined the plane in Singapore, I, I saw him. Look very pale. Yes, it's it was like uh, 11:30, uh, almost midnight. Mrs. Drupadi was on the same flight to Amsterdam and saw Munir in the waiting room. You noticed he looked pale yes. at the time. Not yes. it, not now thinking back. He looked pale, but then I said to myself, okay, you know, he's he was an activist. Maybe he just finished. Uh, having a, what call it, a meeting just before he left, you know, the activist. So I thought, okay, maybe he was tired. Actually, I was going to approach him at the time, but then he was so busy talking with these two person, so I didn't dare to, you know, to in interrupt them. Munir probably looked pale because his stomach was just beginning to digest a deadly dose of arsenic. He reboarded the plane alone and went back to his economy class seat. Not long after takeoff, Munir was fighting fits of diarrhea and vomiting. As they flew over Madras, a hostess woke a doctor and asked him to check on the very sick passenger. The doctor gave him medicine for dehydration and two injections. But with enough arsenic in his stomach to kill two men, Munir's condition rapidly deteriorated. 
He spent his last waking hours...